Our politically incorrect segment tonight, a new video shows college students saying they love socialism. But when they are asked to define what socialism is, they can't do it. Take a look. In your opinion, is socialism a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, I think people kind of throw that word around to try to scare you. But if helping people is socialism, then I'm for it. It could really benefit our country in the future. I think it's a good idea. Socialism as a concept, as a philosophy is good. I think that it's got a bad rep. Trying to spread the wealth is definitely a good thing in America okay. and it's definitely a thing that's needed. There's a lot of things with social welfare that I think would be good to have. Do you have a positive reaction to socialism or a negative one? I'd say a more positive one. I'm definitely more open to it. But we should have a standard of living for all people. Okay. Just by default, that should just be available. If we did it democratically, then we could really incorporate socialism. Like, it's, it definitely seems like a more feasible option and it could help more people. Like, just as a broad term, it could help more people. How would you define socialism? I mean, honestly, that definition gets thrown around a lot. I'm not exactly sure. How would you view what socialism is, though? Um. Economically, what is socialism? Economically, hmm. So, hmm, I'm gonna think about that for a second. Um, jeez. Uh, I guess just specifically just you know, getting rid of that wealth gap in the United States. Um, how would I describe it as little words possible? Um, uh, how would you define socialism? Hmm. Um, I mean, it's definitely more of an open form of government, and it feels like a lot more accessible to a lot more people. And that's kind of how I see it, like being more accessible and more kind of like equal ground. Yeah. What? What does that mean necessarily, though? I'm, to be quite honest, I don't know. With me now, media director for Campus Reform, Cabot Phillips. Cabot, good to see you. It doesn't get any less painful every time I watch it. No, it doesn't. One of our producers went to GW, and she is currently cowering in the corner, embarrassed for her school <laughs> and students who come after her. Cabot, one of the things from this video that killed me, one of the individuals, the students that you interviewed, said that, you know, the word socialism is thrown around a lot in order to scare people. Cabot, I think it is scary. We should be scared by that word. And they apparently don't even know why they should be scared of it or even if it is scary in the first place. And for everyone thinking out there, well, Bernie Sanders, his rise to prominence, it was a one-time thing. No one could possibly continue this role of socialism gaining prominence in America. This just kind of shows how popular it is, but that people don't actually know. A new uh, Pew research study came out and showed that 45% of pe millennials People my age, people our age, said that they would support a socialist candidate for president. And 53% of people in that poll said they think a more socialist economic system would be better than a free market system for our country. And so it is dangerous. Millennials are now the largest voting bloc in America going to the polls with a completely warped idea of what socialism is. Right. The scary part is that millennials, the largest voting bloc, also seem to be the dumbest voting bloc. And I say that as a millennial, as a proud millennial, but still, I mean, the idea that these students think that it is a more accessible form of government, they're in college, they're going to university. Are they not taught the basic political philosophies and the results that we've seen in history? They're absolutely not taught uh, the historical side of what socialism has brought or even what it's bringing right now in Venezuela and Cuba and other real socialist places. They're taught a revisionist form of history. They actually think that socialism, they take that word social and they think, oh, it's social justice. It's social equality for everyone. And no, no, no. The only thing that's equal under socialism is misery. And the only people who aren't miserable in socialism are those in the government. And really what we're seeing, it's two conflicting ideologies. It's either you think the government knows how to run an economy better than people, or you think that free people should make decisions on what's best for them and their families and best for the economy. Those are the conflicting ideas here. And sadly, professors in class are teaching nonstop uh, that it is the government who better understands how to run an economy. And that's why we're seeing this kind of thing. Right. I mean, you're 100% right. I couldn't have said it better. When, they, when these students talk about spreading the wealth around and how we should have an equal standard of living for each person just by default, I don't think they understand. I mean, I don't know how your logic can be this faulty. I don't know how you have 
simply neglected to see what's going on in Venezuela right now, what's happened in Cuba in our parents' generation, what happened in the Soviet Union when you and I, Cabot, were kids. I mean, I don't know how you neglect to see that spreading the wealth around just means that ev nobody has an opportunity. It doesn't mean equal opportunity. It means no one but the government has an opportunity. And I think we also need to look at what is the root cause of this. We've studied how at the Leadership Institute's campus forum, we've seen professors that are constantly teaching this in class, and they're also really praising President Obama's every move. And President Obama also had an impact on this. You know, for the last eight years, he stoked class warfare. He blamed the 1% for the woes of anyone who's our age, saying, if you can't get a job, it's not your fault. It's that rich guy up in that corporate office. It's his fault. And then they also, uh, President Obama made this idea of spreading the wealth, a more mainstream concept to where it was just a fringe element of the far left that believed in spreading the wealth. And now it's everyone on the far left, on the left as a right. whole is, is uh, you know, it's a more mainstream idea. It's more socially acceptable because of President Obama. So we need to look at the cause. It's professors in the classroom and it's also Democrat politicians as a whole. Right, it is because they make the idea of spreading the wealth seem more like just a kindergartner sharing their toys. It's the right thing to do. You'll be better off for it when really that's not how it works. Cabot, this is the most important question of this entire segment when you are doing these interviews on the streets, on college campuses, how do you not laugh at these answers? I, once I get into my Uber after filming, I just laugh for about five minutes straight because it all builds up. I let it all out. Uh, I try different techniques. I bite my lip while I'm talking, while I'm uh, you know, interviewing them so I don't laugh. But uh, it, it's, it is funny. And then I just remind myself of how scary it is. And then, you know, I just want to cry more right. than anything. And then you just have a roller coaster of emotions. Kevin, great job. Yeah. Love your videos. Come back anytime. It's good to talk to you. Uh